Okay, the great search is brought to you by DigiKey and Adafruit. Lady Ada uses her powers of engineering to find stuff on DigiKey.com. Lady Ada, what are you going to show? Okay, so let's go to the overhead because I'm actually going to show off just the things I was showing off. But again, in brief, to intro this oh, one segment. Blurry. Yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't yeah. Whoa, whoa, so much, too much. Okay, so once upon a time, there were computers that had um, serial ports on them. Can you, can you show the serial port um, image? The Which right one? Right and then down two, down one. This one? Yeah, click that. So once upon a time, computers had serial ports, and um, this is a 25-port serial port, or maybe it's a parallel port, but they had nine pin or, or 25 pin ports on the back, and you could send and receive you know, 8-bit serial data, um, plus or minus 12 volts, but then, you know, you could convert that to, to 0 to 5 or 0 to 3 volts and use that to send and receive data from your electronics. And this was amazing and wonderful, and uh, we were in the Garden of Eden. And then, um, you know, people took away serial ports, and then they were like, well, we took away your serial port, but it's okay because we're going to replace it with a USB port. And um, for, like, about 10 years... Microcontrollers did not have USB ports, but they did have serial ports, and so we were in this weird, murky period. Nowadays, um, more chips have built-in uh, USB ports, and I'll show one, but uh, if you go to the next image, okay, you can use something called a USB to serial converter, and this is one of the first circuits I made because it's very handy. It takes USB on the left, you see a USB B type, and on the right, you see, you know, there's a chip and then a crystal, two LEDs, and then a couple pads. Um, the pads are not labeled because this is before you could get silk screen on PCBs for free. Ground power, RX, and TX. And so the chip in the middle there, which is the FT232BM, I believe, was a chip that all it did was connect to USB and present a USB port uh, peripheral and convert that to serial and um, go over to the computer. Um, a lot of microcontrollers now have native USB. So actually, I'll show. I was just showing this. Oh, can you do the overhead? So a board like this, SAMD51 based board. Uh, it's the Cortex M0, and it has USB. And you'll notice there's no chip in between. It's just this chip and USB. It has a native USB converter. Uh, compare that to the Uno, which is earlier. And so you have the microcontroller, and then this little chip here, and it's the USB serial converter. Um, and on the Metro Mini. We also have two chips, chip USB uh, converter. And, and you know, the, the micro bit actually also basically has a USB to serial converter, although it's USB slash serial slash JTAG, whatever. Um, but it, it has a little converter chip. And um, they're not incredibly expensive, but, you know, they're, they're an added cost. But, you know, if you're dealing with something like a RISC-V chip, it doesn't have native USB. or some, some chips just don't have it. And you might be stuck with the chip you have to use or you're upgrading some old design, use a USB serial converter. And so um, I showed the image of the FT232BM. That one's actually no longer made. Um, it was replaced with the FT232RL, which I also think is, is possibly close to being discontinued. Um, so this, uh, this, I think, uses a CP... Yeah, this is a CP2104. Uh, and that's another popular... Scilabs also makes... USB serial converters. Um, and of course, uh, the CP2104 was discontinued um, as, as chips are wont to do. And it was okay for, you know, three or four years because it was like discontinued, but you still get it. But now it's really discontinued. Um, it was, it's been, you know, they're, they're no longer making the 04. Why? I, I don't, you know, maybe there's a little mistake in it. Maybe they wanted to update it. Uh, so it's been replaced. And then um, for Arduino, what they do, which I think is interesting, is they use actually a different microcontroller. The at mega 30 sorry at mega 16 u2 and the u stands for usb it's one of the first usb native chips that um atmel made now you might say well wait a minute if this is a microcontroller that's basically the same as this why not just have one well the leonardo does it kind of combines both of them but there there are reasons why you might want to have separate we you know mostly because there's a ton of code for this chip out there like like tens of thousands of projects a hundred thousand projects and um, this is just a way of keeping it alive. And I think one of the reasons that Arduino did this, they went with a microcontroller, is to avoid that, like, oh, the parts discontinued or we don't have control over it or, or we don't want to customize it a little bit. Also, it can act as a generic CDC device, you don't need a special driver, a couple of reasons. But, and I'll say this is always a valid thing to do. You can always take a microcontroller and make a converter. 
that said, you know, I kind of like for this instance, I do sort of like to use chips that are off the shelf that just kind of do one thing and one thing only. I'm always a little nervous when you combine two microcontrollers. I always feel like you can do it, but there's always a little bit of risk. Um, so let's go to DigiKey and I'll show you the CP2104, which is again, the uh, chip I have loved and used. And you know, it says that it's available, but it's, it's an R and D, you know, uh, not recommended for new designs and having talked to Scilabs, you know, it's a good idea when this comes up, talk to the company and ask them like, what do you mean by that? Because believe me, companies have very wide ranges of what they mean by not recommended. It could be, I mean, I have the, from Scilabs, the SI, I think 1143, uh, you know, light sensor, and it's been NRND for like eight years and I can still get it, right? But it's, they're like, we prefer use a different chip, which, they also discontinued. Anyways, mm. so uh, the Scilab ship is not available. Believe me, I'm, I'm, I have like the last shipment that they're making. They're like, we're done. Um, but they do make others. And I'll say that it was trying to search for like USB to UART. I wasn't, it wasn't as easy to find the category um, because it's, it's, a little, it's a little weird location. So what I think I found easiest to do is just to click on the function because it's a very specific function. And um, let's just view all the similar ones. There's a couple, some of which are a little bit like, this is a bit intense. Um, but we just want active ones because uh, we don't want to get stuck again. I think, uh, yeah. And so there's a couple options. So I'll say that um, of the chips, there are a few families. So microchip, makes um, MCP22, you know, they have a, a series of chips. Scilabs, um, like I said, Cypress, um, Maxlinear, I've never tried, FTDI, I, I've used a lot. So my personal opinion is the microchip ones are good, but they really are a microcontroller that they are reprogramming to act as a USB to serial converter, which is, I'm not against, but I just haven't, haven't used it as much. The one time I used Cypress, it was also a microcontroller that they had re basically just reprogrammed and they packaged it programmed with USB to a serial converter code on it. And I found it was a little flaky. Um, what do I mean by that? So USB serial converters, it's like you'd think it only has one job to do, how hard can it be? But there's actually a lot of little, lot of little details. For example, when you open up the serial port, what happens to the control lines, the DTR and the RTS and the CTS lines? And some play, you know, some chips like toggle them back and forth or some of them, they don't have like, when you try to set the control lines, it doesn't quite work. Um, some of them only support a, a certain number of baud rates. So they only support, you know, 1200 to 115 K. They don't support the ultra high baud rates, like three megabaud. And you're probably like, well, when would I ever need three megabaud? But you will, right? There's always that once in a while, that chip that's like, it really wants to be run at one megabot or higher. And, it, and that's really high. You need pretty good precision to be able to do um, serial at that baud rate. So that's another thing. Or weird baud rates, like 31,250. 31,250 isn't a you know, multiplier of 9,600 or 2,400, but it's used for MIDI. And that is also pretty useful too, once in a while. You need something that takes you know USB serial and can convert it to a MIDI baud rate. Um, or on the ESP8266, I think they use like 77K baud or 77.4 something, something. So there's there's times when you'll get these weird, these weird ass baud rates, or you have to do something with the control lines. And so I will say I've I've tried a lot of converters and they're not all equivalent. They're not all drop in. You definitely want to use it in the weirdest cases that you expect to use it. Um, especially weird baud rates, high baud rates. Um, and uh, control line, you know, noodling. Any uh, questions? Yeah, we'll do a question during the grid search if that's okay. Yeah. Um, what's the drawback of using a chip as a controller and a converter? Um, you know, it's actually probably okay these days because I think if you use like TDUSB, it's really solid. Um, there's just, um, just make sure again, it does control line stuff. Make sure that it does the baud rates you want. Um, 
you know, some of these are just like, you know, like the Scilabs and FTDI ones. They're really rock solid. And, I've, you know, you use them and I've never had an issue. Um, I just think it's riskier if you use your own chip, although you might be able to save a couple couple cents. You know, it depends on the quantities you're purchasing. Of course, it's another programming step you have to take care of. It's like another part of your um, production process, which might be annoying. There's also the chance that it gets... Um, it gets erased somehow, you know, um, chips, if, if you don't set like your brownouts or if there's a bootloader, it could actually get damaged. Um, you know, once in a rare, rare while, you know, people would get Arduinos that we manufactured and they'd say, oh, the chip has, it's coming up as the DFU, the 16U2 got erased. And we can never figure out why, because it would never have made it through the test procedure if it hadn't gotten programmed, but something, it was really rare. Again, it was like one out of like 10,000, and we just replaced them, and we, you know, I, we eventually did, I think, figure out we just kind of like added a secondary check or something. Um, but it's just, it's just another thing that can fail, basically. Um, so that said, uh, you know, the FT series are really good. Um, doesn't look like there's a lot of these in stock. One thing that is in stock is the um, I, again, I haven't tried the Max Linear, although I'm curious to. Um, but the CP twenty one O twos, I found to be. Um, very good and reliable. I like these chips, you know, and I'm, I'm revising the CP2104 to use them. They're not completely pin compatible with the CP2104. They're really close, but they do need an extra resistor divider, which I think is what changed. I think what, what made them switch from the 04 to the 02 is probably something with the voltage detection, you know, maybe um, there was some risk of damage. And so, um, yeah, the CP2102 is maybe a little bit more uh, reliable, right? Because it's like, these are installed in, in so many devices. But these um, these are, are pretty good chips, and they come in, um, I'll say that they come in a different a couple different flavors. This is the 20 pin. And they also come in, uh, I think, a 28 pin. This is the 28. And then I think they come in a 24, and the 24 is like the default, is the default maybe? I don't remember, but look at you can look at the data sheet. Yeah, there's the 20 and the 24 and the 28, um, and the each one is of course a larger package, but it has more like control lines and LEDs and GPIO type things. So um, that said, um, I, I do like the the Scilabs ones and I like the FTDI ones. Those have been the most reliable for me and the ones that can do the highest baud rates, you know, flawlessly pretty much. Okay, and that's a great search.